it was for sure a very stressful, very tiring year uh, traveling around like that. And um, props to all those guys for spending that much time on airplanes and, and, and jet lagged and traveling around the world. Freak Nation, we've been chasing this guy for a little bit. Finally got him in here. Now, now we got him in here as a three-time Superbike champion, Jake Gagne, joining us here in the Freak Nation. Happy birthday, by the way, Jake. And 30 years old today. And I bring that up, one, for all intents and purposes, say happy birthday. Two, <laughs> for Superbike riders, age doesn't really seem to affect them as much as Supercross and Motocross rider. Is it, is it because of the obvious beating that the dirt with supercross and motocross puts on the body of a rider you know i i think so for sure um yeah i think the body is a big part of it and if you can stay healthy uh you can keep on trucking you know and hayes is a hayes is a great example i mean that guy's in his his 40 40 45 46 something like that and he's still mm -hmm. uh he still kept it healthy and still you know really really killing it so i'd like to see uh, i'd like to hope i can Stay healthy and see how long we can keep keep it going. Three-time Superbike champion, Jake Gagne, joining us here in the Freak Nation. And, Jake, you look at the list of Americans who have won the Superbike uh, championship. I think there's, uh, there, there's a short list of riders that have won it three times. I mean, you're in the, you're in the, the likes of Ben Spees, uh, Nikki Hayden, Josh Hayes, guys like that, guys that I'm sure you looked up to. Do you look at them now, or do you still look at up to what those guys have done? Oh no, I definitely still uh, still look up to those guys, and it is even for me um, a bit a bit surreal to be in that kind of same category and have um, yeah have three three super bike championships now and, and a lot of wins and uh, looking back, you know, even in my early twenties or early part of my career uh, to. To know that I'd be here now would be pretty special. So it's like, yeah, like I said, kind of, kind of surreal and, and hard to believe at times. But um, yeah, we've we've done some good work with the team these last couple of years, and it's been a good run. Well, who were your idols growing up? Because your path was on the dirt. Your path was motocross. And then, do I have this right? Your dad actually signed you up for a road racing program, and the rest is history. So who were your motocross idols? And then let's talk about how you transitioned from dirt to asphalt. Yeah, definitely. Um, growing up, pretty much pretty only much. known in the motocross world, uh, you know, Jeremy McGrath at that time when I was young, uh, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, all those guys in motocross is uh, who I really looked up to. And, you know, in, I would think I was about 13 or 14. And like you said, my dad signed me up for that Red Bull Rookies Cup program that they ran here. And uh, at that time, I truly didn't know anything, anything about, about road racing. I was kind of a strictly a motocross kid and that was my dream to go motocross and supercross racing one day. Um, yeah, my dad signed me up through a local, I was riding KTMs and had some KTM support at the time. And he heard about it at the local shop and maybe saw a flyer, signed me up kind of without really saying much. And one day he kind of said, Hey, you got picked to do this road racing thing or try out. And, um, like I said, it was a completely new world. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, and so we kind of scrounged together, got some leathers and got a helmet and, and flew on out to Barber and gave it a shot. So it was kind of a, a, a really quick transition, but amazing opportunity that, that Red Bull uh, put on at the time to bring some kids in from other, for, you know, a lot of motocross, road, uh, flat track kids. And um, it's cool. Even today you see in Moto America, a lot of, a lot of the guys now were guys that were racing in that series in 2008. So, Wow. Okay, so the guy that you just saw on Mav TV last weekend win his third championship, third consecutive, I might say, as well, in the Moto America series, you were scrounging together to find raggedy leathers to get this thing going. Do you still have those whatever mish, pish posh leathers? I th I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I know I got the helmet too that I wore that first time sitting in a sitting in a garage somewhere. Um, but yeah, it, it it is crazy to me to see kind of how that my life took a a pretty quick turn. You know, uh, we figured we'd give the road racing thing a shot for a year, and um, if nothing worked out, we'd go back to ride motocross. And obviously that that year we made some progress. We started off in the beginning for sure one of the slowest kids out there. Um, but made a lot of progress. And then from there, had the opportunity to go to two years in the in the European Red Bull Rookies Cup and 
kind of just from there, like I said, had really, really great opportunities and people supporting and um, kind of just hopped on that train and, and went road racing. So I'm really glad that I was able mm. to have those opportunities and make that switch and, and be where I am today. Jake Gagne, three time, three straight times. He's won the Moto America Superbike Championship. Mentioned Ben Spees. We were close with Ben Spees for a couple of minutes. In fact, he came running out of the garage once at uh, Auto Club Speedway and uh, was bragging about dunking a basketball. He loved playing basketball. Is there anything <laughs> else in your life that uh, would match the passion that you have for racing superbikes? Not, you know, not so much. I started racing dirt bikes at five or six, you know, and even at that time, I think like most kids, you know, I play a little soccer, uh, little, little T-ball maybe and stuff like that. But once I started on motorcycles, I was kind of my, um, my main thing. And obviously growing up motor motorcycles and riding a lot of bicycles, BMX bikes and mountain bikes and stuff like that. I think I was always geared more towards the wheels. Wow, Kenny's a soccer guy. You play goal, you play midfield. How do you handle a soccer ball? <laughs> I mean, if, I don't know if it was very well. I, and I think at, at five years old, I think everybody, all the kids just kind of run around chasing the ball. And I don't know if there was a whole lot of structure to it, but <laughs> it was still a lot of fun. Well, they can say the same thing about Superbike now. A lot of guys running around chasing you. Uh, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask. In fact, Seems like every race you start off first couple of laps, uh, everybody's in a pack and you're kind of leading the pack. And then all of a sudden you shrug and take off and they have to chase you for the rest of the 15, 16, 17 laps. <laughs> uh, is that kind of a plan to find out who's fast and who's not that day? Uh, I think it's for me, it's ideal. You know, obviously getting a good qualifying position is always nice and getting a start. Um and I've always been, especially these last couple of years, you know, I know kind of the pace that I'd like to run. So we just kind of get out there and, and try to try to thin the herd. And, uh, and you know how racing goes too. I mean, it's, it's a lot cleaner air getting out front and it's a little bit easier to avoid any drama that might happen. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's good battling with the guys and it's good to see, uh, especially this year. Um, it's been changing, you know, and all the other teams and riders have really stepped it up and had a lot of speed. And, um, so it's been nice being able to battle with some guys and go head to toe. And, uh, but yeah, it's always changing. It's always nice to get a start and have clean air, but we got to be ready for, for anyone. So one quick final and I'll be out of the way. Are you racing yourself or are you racing the other guys in the pack? I guess it depends, you know, it depends on the day, racing myself and racing the track, but you always got to be ready for, um, for somebody to make a pass and, and stick it in there. And, uh, like I said, this year that's, that's happened plenty of times. So it's been a nice, um, it's been enjoyable doing some battling with some of those guys and, um, having kind of a different, a different flair to the race. And, uh, you know, yeah, like we said, we've had some, some exciting close racing th this year and that's something that, um, has been enjoyable for me and I think hopefully uh, enjoyable for the fans who want to see a good show and a good battle at the front. Jake Gagne, three-time Superbike champion, joining us here in the Freak Nation and the Freak Radio Network and on MAV TV. A couple of more races left. You've got Austin, you've got Jersey. And Jake, is there any sandbagging in qualifying for Superbikes? No, no, not at all. I think everybody wants the best starting position possible and – um yeah, we always have to give it our best and try to understand how, how fast we can go on these bikes and understand how we can make the bikes work a little better and us as riders, how to, how to figure out how to ride around some stuff and, and just get just get more pace. But there's never any, uh, yeah, no sandbagging from anybody, I don't think, in this sport. Would you tell me if there is? <laughs> I'd like to think so, yeah. <laughs> but no, we, you know, we always want to get the best qualifying position possible and also uh, – yeah, be able to start at the front and understand kind of the, the pace that is comfortable for, for our bikes on, and on the track on that weekend. Bobier and Heron, they've had their championships. Uh, Bobier in particular, a few more. When you look at what those guys have done and what they mean to the series, along with you being the three-time champion, it just makes for better racing when there are three or four dudes that are running for the championship and there are maybe 10 riders that can win on any given Sunday, but with your dominance 
Uh, it's not like that. What, what puts you head and shoulders above some of these guys to win a championship with two damn races left? <laughs> you know, this year, I mean, it's been a, kind of a wild ride, and I feel like we've had uh, luck on our side, you know, a lot of these weekends. And it was really not expected to, to win a championship this early on. Um, but, you know, with some of the other guys having trouble, you know, obviously Bobier missing some races uh, with some unfortunate injuries and um, some DNFs from some of the other guys. You know, we've had uh, only one DNF at Road America and all the other races. I, I think all the other races we've been on the podium. So this year the, the consistency really, really paid off. Um, and that was kind of a real goal of mine going into the year. You know, these this last year I think I made it tough on myself and, and having some crashes on days where I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have had a crash, you know? Um, so I was trying to learn from that. And even going into this year, I knew it would be tough. Some days we weren't the fastest guy. I didn't have the pace to win. And that showed, you know, Bobier and, and Heron and, uh, some of those guys have gotten some really good wins. And so there were some of those days I had to be smart. And if, if second or third or whatever is, is all I could do, that's kind of what I wanted to do is make sure I just brought home as many finishes as possible. And, uh, yeah, now it seems like that's that's paid off, and so I'm happy we were able to able to pull that off thus far. And um, yeah, you know the final two rounds, four more races to go, and it's nice to have the championship out of the way, and it feels good to get that done for the team and our sponsors. But uh, I, I'd like to think now that we don't have to think about that, we can go out there and, and have some good battles with these guys, and uh, especially these last two tracks. I think there's all those other riders are going to be really strong, so I think it'll be it'll be very close. Bottom line, 2023 is the year of domination, whether it's Jet Lawrence in motocross, Alex Pillow in IndyCar, Max Verstappen in Formula One, you in Moto America. Just just basically enjoy it. You planned this for your 30th birthday. We get it. So enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, um, it's still two rounds to go, but it's a good weight off off the back off the back. Uh and most importantly, you know, um, it's just really awesome. Like I said, to get it to get a championship for Yama again, to get it for Attack Performance and all the whole crew who worked so hard to make it happen. Um, yeah, you know, this this past weekend at Pittsburgh going in, I definitely never thought it. I didn't even imagine it could happen this early. Um, hmm. So it was kind of a different a different energy. It was uh, actually quite the surprise to leave there on Sunday uh, with that job done and. Um, yeah, really cool, and it was just great to see the whole team excited and, and all our sponsors who support us. Uh, so, yeah, really awesome. But looking forward, like I said, to, to have some racing with no championship to think about to finish off the year. Jake, have you had a chance to see that accident between Bobier and Yates? I did. I just I saw the replay. Um, yeah, can, you explain, such a, can you explain it, to the naked eye? I mean, if you look at it fast, it doesn't look like Yates checked up, but if you study it, he does check up. Uh, can you give me some behind the scenes of what really happened there when Bobier ran up on Yates? I didn't, I didn't talk to Yates or I'm not sure what happened with the bike, but it, it was pretty clear that he didn't, I mean, something I think happened with the bike and it shut off because he, or something, because he put his hand up. So it wasn't in an, anything intentional by him. Uh, and it just kind of a wrong place, wrong time for Bobier. And um, it was a real bummer to see, to see, that happened to Cameron, you know, I wanted, he's kind of been my main competitor, I'd say, you know, uh, and it was kind of, yeah, really bummer to, to see that happen, uh, for him. And, but yeah, I, I don't know what happened to the bike or what happened with Yates, but it for sure, just something I think happened and bike shut off or mechanical or something and just, yeah, wrong place, wrong time. Is your body 30 years old or does it feel about 60? Sometimes you wake up in the morning. No, I'm, I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I think, mm. I, I think I feel better than ever. Um, maybe it's hard to say, but maybe as the years go by, I don't quite recover from injuries pretty quick, but I still feel really good. I've been fortunate to have, um, nothing major knock on wood. And, um, yeah, my body feels so really good. My mind feels good. And, uh, yeah, I'm fortunate, like I said, to, to still be feeling at the top of my game and I'm still, I think improving and getting better, uh, every year. Well, it's certainly one of our favorite series. We, when we started Speed Freaks 23 years ago, it, it's like there's only been six or seven champions. Uh, and I think it started with Matt Maladden, ran through oh, Spees, right. uh, Josh Hayes. I could go Nikki, on. Yeah, yeah Nikki. Uh, it's, it's incredible that this sport isn't more popular because what you guys do for two or 20 laps is straight up balls, man. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, it, it has been really cool to see the growth in Moto America um, over since 2015, I believe, it was Moto America's first year. And, uh, you know, me being at the races every every year, every weekend, going back to these same tracks, we see we see a bigger, better turnout um, pretty dang consistently every year at every track. Um, and so I think that's all you can ask for is just, you know, more people consistently get into the races and, uh, and obviously, you know, with the TV package and the video stuff, it's, it, that's always stepping it up. But for me as a racer, it's just always really cool to see more fans lining the hills at the races and more fans in the pits every year. Um, and more, also more people new to the sport or new to Moto America come out and check a race and be, and become fans and bring the family. So that uh that growth every year has been really cool and it, it shows a job well done by by Moto America and everybody involved and it um and good racing all the way around in all the classes it's been really good and it seems especially this year seems to be better than ever in in all the classes so that uh that always helps quickly i saw something jake gagne that said you weren't interested in world superbike was that wrong or oh he's uh, been there yeah you know at this point in my career it would have to be kind of a really, I think a really good opportunity just seeing as, you know, I've been with this Yamaha attack team for a couple of years now. It's the happiest I've ever been with the best crew and the best motorcycle that I've ever been. Uh, And like I, like we just said, seeing the Moto America, the growth in Moto America over the years, um, it's really awesome for me to be a part of and to be here racing on, on American turf with American fans is special for me. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm I'm really really happy with with what I got going on here, and uh, maybe one day I know I'm getting older every year, um, and there's a lot of a lot of young Europeans lining the gates to to get on those bikes in Europe. But um, for me now, everything is working pretty well here, and uh, I just I want to be a part of Moto America and be a part of this Yamaha family. And but I, you know, like I've said before, I'm open I'm open to anything if uh, if the opportunity is right. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, these next couple of years, but I'd, I'd really like to stay in Moto America and uh, keep this superbike dream alive and, and keep on keep on rolling. Aren't you happy to just have had your stint over there, though, for a couple of years and be like, yeah, I've done that. I got the taste. It's fun, but it's tiring. I'm, I like being on American soil. Yeah, that, I think that was good for me to have those experiences. Obviously, even as a teenager racing in, in Ricky's Cup as um, in Europe and spending a little bit of time in that, over there and then 20 – 2018 is when I did, I think the full season in world Superbike, And, um, it was really eye opening experience. I learned, I learned a lot as a rider, um, as well as getting to travel around the world was, it's just an amazing opportunity, but, uh, it, it was for sure. It was for sure a very stressful, very tiring year, uh, traveling around like that. And, um, props to all those guys for spending that much time on airplanes and, and, and jet lagged and traveling around the world. And, um, but, yeah, I'm happy that I had that experience, and it's good to ha- it's good to have that as a comparison to here racing in America, and you know, getting to be home and not having to fly around the world. And uh, <laughs> it, it's it's hard to say, you know, they both have their their uniqueness and their uh, the parts you can join and take from them. But like I said, I'm I'm really grateful that I got a gig here in Moto America and get to be a part of this series. Austin, New Jersey, last two races. You can catch them on Mav TV, Freak Nation, Jake. Thanks for taking time out, man. Enjoy your 30th birthday. All right, buddy. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. And I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll talk to you guys soon and uh, we'll catch up again. From the lab to Lucas Oil products, Lucas Oil Complete Engine Treatment is a multifunctional cleaner plus lubricant. For every fill up of gas or diesel, add one 16 ounce can of Lucas Oil Complete Engine Treatment. One bottle can treat a tank of up to 21 gallons. Its special additives allows a better fuel burn to help increase your miles per gallon. Expect longer engine life, longer oil life, cleaner exhaust, and less fuel consumption. Lucas Oil, it works. General Tire was born more than 100 years ago, right here in America. We've spent the last century tackling every kind of road this country has to offer, and especially the places without roads. So you know that with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Bomberito Automotive Group 500 at Worldwide Technology Raceway is not just a race, it's a spectacle. 
It's time to mark your calendar. Saturday, August 26th and Sunday, August 27th. 2023 is bigger and better than ever before. Get ready for the wildest festival of speed in the Midwest. Go to www.raceway.com now because the first deal is the best deal. The weekend racing is over, or is it? Not on MAV TV. Monday is All American Racing Night on the network which never leaves the track. Sit back and enjoy grassroots red, white, and blue racing from America's most iconic tracks. Whether it's the precise lines of pavement ovals or the door banging action of the dirt, MAV TV's Monday Night lineup will bring you all the action from this country's legendary four wheel battlegrounds. Monday Night is All American Racing only on MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Whatever you do, General Tire delivers. Are you worried about your taxes? Okay, so I'm talking to those of you out there that have not filed in a few years with the IRS or state. It's time to get worried, and here's why. The IRS is getting back from their own COVID lockdown, and they're hiring more enforcers, and they're going to come after people that owe taxes. So if you're a 1099 worker, and maybe you just plain forgot to file your taxes, you need to call the professionals right now at the tax helpline. They are experts at knowing the tax regulations and their goal is to help you pay as little as possible. Call right now and get a 100% free tax evaluation. Remember, before the IRS knocks on your door, knock on our door. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, make this free call right now. Call taxes 321 now at 800-808-9443. 800-808-9443. That's 800-808-9443. From the labs at Lucas Oil Products, Lucas Oil Complete Engine Treatment is a multifunctional cleaner plus lubricant. For every fill-up of gas or diesel, add one 16-ounce can of Lucas Oil Complete Engine Treatment. One bottle can treat a tank of up to 21 gallons. Its special additives allows a better fuel burn to help increase your miles per gallon. Expect longer engine life, longer oil life, cleaner exhaust, and less fuel consumption. Lucas Oil, it works. Motorsports Radio, redefined. 